Right, the answers for weekly test number five. Um, yes, some of you got this right. Uh, lithium aluminium hydride is a reducing agent and it will reduce a ketone to an alcohol. And lithium aluminium hydride as a reducing agent, it's releasing effectively an H minus, which is a very small nucleophile. And so the nucleophile, because it is small, will prefer an axial attack to put the uh, uh, alcohol that gets formed in the equatorial position. And if we work around the ring, the isopropyl group being a locking group, it's equatorial up, so equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial will be down, so the OH, which is going to end up equatorial, is going to be down. So the product, uh, very simply, was going to be, so we've got the isopropyl up, the methyl group is still down, doesn't change, and the OH ends up down because the H came in from the top. And this would have given you uh, two marks if you got that correct. Uh, then the chair conformation of this, uh, just sketch this out. Right, so I'm wanting all these lines to be, oops, to be parallel to each other like that. Uh, the OH is going to be in an equatorial position, which is parallel to these lines. All right, OH. The methyl group over there must is down, so it has to be axial. It's going to be like that. And the isopropyl group is up, which is equatorial this position because it is uh, parallel to these lines over there. All right. And so none of these are wedges or dashes, all right? They're just as they are over there, and you would have got two marks for that. If you got the stereochemistry wrong over here, I would have given you two marks as long as your chair was drawn out very neatly. Okay, right. Uh, then on to this question. Now, uh, this type of question, you're going to get something like this. It'll come up in your test and exam. And uh, I, I could see that a lot of you had the right kind of idea of where you're going, and so you would have got some marks. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, in order to get this, this question right, you need to lay out uh, a reasonable explanation of everything that's going on. So the first point is obviously to recognize that uh, in the reaction itself, um, we are forming the enolate, which looks like uh, this. It could have formed on the other side as well. Um, over there. It's not too important um, about that. But anyway, I've just drawn it uh, like this. And um, <clears throat> the in order to understand where the electrophile comes in, which is benzyl bromide, in order to understand that, we need to look at the half chair. All right. So you can even write that as part of the your explanation. Need to uh, look at half chair. Uh, and and so we need to draw those out, and there are two conformations. So the one will look like this. Now just notice that the line that's going over here is a single line that's passing behind that double bond. All right. So this uh, some people were drawing things that looked uh, like this. All right. That is very wrong. This to that point over there is a single line and we just have a gap there so it looks neat as it goes as it goes through there all right so that's the one confirmation the other one is going to look uh, like that all right and we need to figure out which one is the favored one so we put our o minus on over there so we count around and we'll see on this one the t butyl group will be facing up on that carbon and up is the axial position, and if we put our uh, oxygen over there, if we count around, we get to this point, and it's equatorial up uh, the T butyl group over there. If we look at this uh, straight on, you can see this is above the plane. There's the the plane over there. This is pointing slightly slightly up. Uh, so we look at this. This one must be the favored uh, conformation. So we can indicate that with. Uh, uh, equilibrium arrows if you want to that would have been fine uh, you can also write here this is the favored uh, conformation okay so you would have got um, some marks for doing that so that's the first step the second step is to appreciate that this and you can show this that the reaction is going to either occur from the top or bottom you can write there top and bottom depending on where the electrophile is, the electrophile I'll just write as an E, 
the electrophile, of course, is benzyl bromide, which some of you did get this wrong, but benzyl bromide looks like that. Uh, and over here, you can now write um, that. Uh, uh, whoops, let's get that in there. Let me see that. Uh, electrophile uh, from top uh, gives twist boat. All right, because. If it comes in from the top, this whole thing is going to swing round like that. So this this line becomes more in this sort of angle here, which means it's not running parallel to that. And then you can you can try and draw out that twist uh, the twist boat, which will look something like this. I find that this is an easier one to draw out than the uh, than the twist chair. The T butyl is still in the same position over here. This is where the benzyl group is coming in over there, and this is where um, the oxygen is and it'll end up being something like that. Uh, it's the twist ba boat transition state, okay, TS. It's not a twi twist boat confirmation, so to speak, because it's, it's, it's a transition state that it goes through. All right, um, it's a particular transition state. Uh, the other, other option is, uh, uh, is electrophile from bottom. Uh, gives twist boat. Sorry, twist chair. Mistake. Transition state. There we go. And the twist chair is going to look uh, a little bit like so. It's going a bit more like this. Something about a bit like that, where we now this is going to become the carbonyl. This over here is the uh, phenyl. We still got that sitting uh, over there um, and that this is favored uh, and gives product okay so that's the the logic that you have to work through um, with this they, they two two things the first thing is to establish that there are two confirmations and then then there's a preferred one all right this one over here then the next step is to establish that the electrophile could come from the top or the bottom, and then the and then the last stage is to establish draw is drawing out these structures over here and establishing that and recognizing if it comes from the top it gives the twist boat all right and if it comes in from the bottom it'll give the twist chair because if it comes in from the bottom over here this whole thing sort of twists around like that and becomes. Uh, parallel to uh, to this line uh, at the back. Okay, um, I will I will accept in uh, in answers. Uh, I mean, I know these are very difficult to draw out. If you don't want to draw these out, you still need to recognize whether you go for top. You know that that whether twist boat to twist chair will form. Um, but in the in the final analysis, in terms of uh, an exam or a test, um, I will not. Uh, I will take off maybe half a mark or one mark if it's like an eight mark question or something like that if you haven't drawn these things out. So, you know, it's it's a lot of, uh, if you don't want to learn how to draw these things out here, it's not going to make a big deal in terms of, you know, maybe losing a mark. Uh, so long as you can at least identify that whether it comes in from the top or the bottom, whether you're going to get a twist boat or a twist chair. Don't get confused by this now and just say that whenever it comes in from the bottom, it's going to give a twist chair. That's not what's happening here, all right? It has to, it depends on the particular confirmation of this. Because on this one over here, if it came in from the bottom, it would give the twist boat. Okay, so if this was a different uh, chiral center and it was now pointing down there, then it would look different on, on here. So you have to recognize that. You must be able to do that. This this type of question in a testing exam would probably be uh, closer to the seven or eight marks uh, and uh, to give a full explana explanation like this. Um, so it is well worth uh, making sure that you can do uh, something like this. All right.